Hello, this is Dr. Riley, Family Physician, St. George, Utah, and today I want to talk about the use of niacin in prevention of cardiovascular disease. So, um, starting out early in my career, you know, we were taught that niacin is one of those essential uh, supplements or, or medications that can be given in patients who um, can't tolerate statins or specifically patients who have a low HDL to bring up their HDL, which is your good cholesterol, or if they have high triglycerides to address triglycerides, and that it will make a difference in their overall outcome. And um, data in the last few years has shown that that's probably not the case. So this is a review of a study that was published in the American Academy of Family Physicians, a uh, overall summary of the review looking at uh, retrospective data, basically doing what they call a cohort study, and primarily looking at um, the Cochrane database of uh, medical studies to compile multiple studies together so that we have a larger number uh, of patients' data in the overall analysis to increase the strength of the data and actually look at and see is the recommendations that are being given um, strong recommendations and truly reflective of the data the way that they should be. So the ultimate question that they asked in this particular study is, is niacin effective for primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular or cerebrovascular events? So what does that mean? If you've never had a heart attack or stroke, can we reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke by using niacin? Or if you have had an event previously, can we reduce your risk of having a secondary event? That's what the question is asking. So this was um, a review of the, the data, again, as a cohort study uh, by uh, Joseph R. Yancey, MD, a Defense Health Agency, Falls Church, Virginia and Jean Marie B. Ray, MD, Fort Belvoir uh, Community Hospital, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the data. So they looked at niacin um, as either monotherapy, so niacin in and of itself, or in a, a combination with a statin, so a cholesterol medication, uh, versus placebo in terms of overall mortality, meaning risk of death, cardiovascular events, meaning heart attack, cerebral vascular events, meaning stroke, uh, and adverse events of taking the medication, niacin. So this uh, ended up compiling together 23 different randomized control trials that were published between 1968 and 2015, resulting in um, just under 40,000 patient data, so 39,195 um, patients that they looked at. So the overall analysis of this data, um, the, the, the meat of the study was that niacin, otherwise known as nicotinic acid or vitamin B3, does not reduce myocardial infarctions, meaning heart attacks, strokes, or overall mortality when used for either primary, meaning you've never had an event before, or secondary, meaning you've had an event we're trying to prevent a future event from happening. That's pretty hard and fast data. Um, so let's look at how they came to that conclusion. So again, we do know over the years that niacin has been shown to be one of the most effective agents in increasing serum levels of HDL, which is your good cholesterol, and that patients with a low level of HDL in and of itself are independent risk factor for having um, cardiovascular or cerebrovascular, meaning heart attack or stroke events. However, by using niacin to adjust the HDL cholesterol in and of itself did not seem to change the secondary uh, or primary endpoints in preventing those things from happening. Um, niacin did appear to increase the risk of several adverse events, which is really not surprising. I see these all the time in my office. Um, so increased risk of flushing uh, in 7.69% uh, uh, of patients who take uh, niacin. The number needed to treat to cost one, uh, a person to have flushing, 3.5. So one out of every three patients who take niacin are going to have problems with flushing. Um, pruritus or itching. Uh, so the numbers needed to treat uh, to cause harm, um, 4.8. So one out of four patients who take are going to have itching. A rash, uh, gastrointestinal problems, uh, increased risk of developing diabetes. Um, and niacins were, uh, users were also more likely to quit using the medication in the first place just because of all the side effects that they're having. So again, that's not surprising. So again, the overall treatment point is if you are prescribing niacin still for your patients to try to reduce the risk of them having heart attack or stroke, please stop. The data is very clear. This does not help. 
Let's focus on those things that are meaningful that will help and stop giving patients side effects from using this niacin medications uh, and hopefully make their life a little better, but also help reduce their risk of harm in, in the end. I hope this information has been helpful for you as a patient, but also as a medical provider. Uh, hopefully this will help with changing some of your prescribing patterns if you have still been using niacin or recommending this. And until next time, this is Dr. Radley, family physician in St. George, Utah. Pura Vida.